popular radio these days, at least on VHF, UHF, is this Quan Sheng, uh, UVK5, I believe it is, UVK5. You can get them for about 30 bucks on Amazon and sites like that. And the fun thing is you can install new firmware, which gives them a lot more capability than your typical um, FM only HT. So what I hope to do in this video is show you a couple of settings I have on mine and how I got it working. Hopefully make your setup a little bit easier. If you're wondering how big it is, this is a standard Baofeng, a number of years old, so Quan Sheng is a little bit taller. The antenna is definitely bigger. Um, still probably works better with aftermarket antennas but it's a pretty similar size, you know, similar thickness. So, and definitely much more user-friendly. This is not a fun radio to use. This, however, is. The firmware I decided to put on this is called UVK5CEC. Um, it was written by uh, KD8CEC. Uh, there's a lot of different versions. This is 0.03Q, which if you look at the bottom of the screen when I turn it on, it'll tell you that. I'll put a link down below, but there's online flashers so that you don't need any special things. You just need a standard Baofeng programming cable. It just goes in the side, make sure you push it in all the way. It is a bit of a tight fit. And then you can flash it. It will work with Chirp. You do have to download a special module. I can put a link to the solution to that as well. Typical sort of buttons, you know, if you want to switch between the two, there's an AB button. You can see the little thing goes, and all the buttons do what you'd expect. Um, you can see here I'm on the 2 meter FM calling frequency. And I can go up the next memory is 144.2 which is the 2 meter sideband calling frequency and then also in CW mode. Um, this doesn't actually do real single sideband, it's actually double sideband but if the other person's on single sideband uh, they'll never know. Definitely can do 2 meters and 70 centimeters. It will let you transmit, I'm not sure how much power on like the 222 band and stuff and I got a bunch of repeaters and whatnot. 900 it might be able to work in 1296. So yeah, FM operation is exactly what you think. Um, in the menu, you can change the step size. The first interesting menu item is this U info, user info. So you can set your call sign, which you'll want to do, your name, your grid. You can look that up online if you don't know what it is. Um, if you want to use APRS, stuff like that, you'll need to set your latitude and longitude. Um, you do have to set that by hand. I don't think you can attach a GPS to this. Um, I was playing around. You can program in your, uh, the person you're working, their call sign. Um, some APRS settings. Um, there's some SSTV. And then a bunch of CW messages. You actually get 10 of them. So there's that. Um, so the CW key here um, for CW mode with this firmware version, which is 0.03Q, I believe, um, it's got iambic A, B, and external straight key. I found for the paddle I have, I was able to key most accurately using B, but that's personal preference. Uh, CW side tone, the CW delay, it's a lot easier myself and a number of other people have found if you set the delay to, you know, one or two or even three seconds, um, that's the time after you stop sending before it switches back to, tr to receive mode. Whoops. See there, the keyer speed. Um, the CW81 through 4, these are the default values here. They set 
how the radio reads the dit and the da and both paddle together when you have it plugged in the side. Um, if you use the recommended resistor values, then I think these are fine. If not, you might have to play with them. Transit power, repeater stuff. Um, Demod U, this is all the different modes. So there's FM, AM, single sideband, which is actually double sideband, suppressed carrier, CW, CW with FM mode, and CWN is CW, but it doesn't transmit. Scanning stuff, you can save, delete, and rename the channels as you'd expect. Um, you can, the, there's two side buttons you can program in. The, the short and long press is what you want them to do. So that's what I've done. Um, all this other stuff, most of that I've just left it at defaults. Those are the menu items. For CW, for a couple bucks, I bought this paddle from AliExpress. You can see there's two resistors in there. There's a 10K and a 20K. And somewhere I wrote down um, the diagram online is not super clear, but the 20K resistor goes to the DIT paddle and the 10K to the DAW. And if you're using a straight key, I think it just needs a 10K. But that just plugs in, let's see, there we go, to the one down here. And then over here, if we go to CW mode, try not to blow your ears out. So try not to fry my brain, put on low power. Come. When you're using the paddle, you have to hit one of them once and it'll go to transmit mode and then you can start sending. And the nice thing about this is that there's actually a keyer. So you can also get into transit mode, you hit the push to talk button, and then I hit the star button and that gives you all the memories, and I programmed it nine. It's just a CQ. And then the down arrow will send my call sign. And up arrow will send the DX call sign if you have it saved. And you can send with the paddles. And but then, if you're in this mode, you do have to hit exit to get back to receive. And so we're back in receive mode. And, you know, when you're playing with the keyer, um, number two will clear that stuff, and then I can send a call sign. And then if I hit one, it'll save it as the DX call. So if I exit and I go back to the menu and look through whatever DX call is, Whoops, there it is. You can see I have a new DX call saved. So that's one way you can update that if you're in a CW conversation. So that's pretty cool. Um, whoops, head back into here. Uh, not totally sure what all the other three, four, five, six do, but star does get to the memories. And the little asterisk means you have something saved there. So like this is a, CQ soda. So there is CW mode. Another cool thing this firmware can do is transmit APRS. So if we go into the menu in the user info, um, set my latitude, longitude. Um, this was tricky since I'm not super familiar with APRS, but um, you gotta set the digipeter one and two and 
for me, wide 1-1 and wide 2-1 have been working. And then you, you can set this message to however many characters there are. So I just put it the frequency I'd be listening on. And then get out of that, we come down to my SSID. You can set that to whatever number. I believe 7 is for portable stations. And then you go to t.aprs, transit aprs. And you can, well, first, let me back up. You set that stuff. You also have to figure out what the APRS frequency is in your area. So in North America, it's 144.39 FM. And you got to go in and save that to, um, if you go, it's there's two memories just below number one. APRS GPS and APRS message and just save those both to the correct frequency with FM and high power. Um, so you want to do that. And then once you do that and you set up the other menu stuff, we go back up to where to go, transit APRS. And then if I want to transmit my position, I hit that. And that just sent out a packet. And if I didn't live in a Faraday cage, I could look on APRS.fi and it would show my position once somebody heard me. Oops. Um, I'm not sure what the difference between STS and MSG are. One of them or both of them will transmit the text that you have in the APRS message in this user info. APRS message and then the other cool thing if you need to send a long message you can go to CW message and it will transmit the stuff you have in in CW memory 0 through 4 it'll just concatenate them all together and go until it sees until it gets to the end of the memory or it sees the pound sign it'll stop transmitting so that's how you can you know, send a long message if you want to try and spot for soda or poda or something like that. So I I was playing with the APRS last time I went out up on a hill, and it does work. The digipeters are hearing me. Just use my phone to find where I was and type in the coordinates, and so that works. And if you have a, a phone, you can download or install like APRS Droid or whatever the iPhone equivalent is, and and receive APRS. This version of the firmware also has a slow scan TV built in. So in the user info, there's SSTV message one and message two. So you set those to something and um, set your call sign to something, to whatever your call sign is. And then you can come down to um, SSTV encode and can choose Scotty one or um, I forget what MT one one of the other SSTV modes and then transmit SSTV you can transmit the CQ which will uh, give you a CQ screen and a QSO which I believe adds the DX call call sign to the image and this will just transmit whatever's on the screen um, I was experimenting with this with a um, Android SSTV decoder and it was giving me very slanty decode so I'm not sure if there's a problem with the radio or the app or something it, it needs more experimenting on my part the other thing which I haven't tried yet but I want to this weekend or next weekend when I can get out is uh, try some FT8 um, got another a different app that will transmit to code FT8 so no reason can't make some 2 meter FTA contacts. Um, I could build a cable, but I'll probably just hold the phone right next to it and hope that it's not too windy so that I can, can get a good signal. One thing to note is that it says sideband um, on the radio, but the radio is not actually capable of transmitting single sideband. It's actually double sideband suppressed carrier. And that's generally not a problem until you try and make a sideband QSO with somebody else who has one of these. 
Uh, and it turns out that any small errors in frequency or phase between the two radios will make the audio almost unintelligible. So if the other person is running real single sideband, that won't be a problem. But double sideband to double sideband can be a problem. And probably the best way to get around that is to both run AM. Or maybe only one person needs to run AM. I'm not totally sure. Um, got a couple friends in the area and got to experiment a little bit to see what works and what works best. So I'll report back once I figure that out.